so uh, students so uh, this video we are starting uh, with the uh, module 2 of uh, the structural uh, dynamics so uh, so far in the module 1 these were the topics which we discussed the last class we discussed about steady state amplitude dynamic magnification factor concept of resonance that is when omega dash is equal to omega applied frequency when it is equal to the natural frequency then they, it results into a dynamic magnification factor which is infinity that is resonance so likewise uh, we have discussed many topics now the second module it uh, we need to study about forced vibration of sdof system and uh, in that we are first of all we have to study about rectangular load then triangular load half sine pulse then we are having another uh, about the support motion that is mainly earthquake then a term vibration isolation transmissibility and likewise these are the topics so i am planning to uh, take uh, record uh, recorded video of uh, three to four classes that is uh, be because in retro uh, recorded video we can cover a lot of topics so uh, so here i am today starting with this uh, topic rectangular triangle and half sine wave okay now let us go to the topic so before that impulsive loading now we are going to say impulsive loading what is impulsive loading a impulsive loading that is, is a relatively short duration load they are of great importance in the design of certain classes of structures due to for example the explosion damping has much less in importance in controlling the maximum response of a structure to impulsive loading uh, than for periodic number because the maximum response to a particular impulsive load will reach in a very short duration of time before the damping forces can absorb much energy okay so what what i have said is that we are going to study about many types of load in that first one it is impulsive load. what is impulsive loading that is a blast that is or a impact impact from a vehicle or a impact due to, due to a machinery or another example is impact when a um, ship is uh, hitting the, sh the 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 structures so the, so, so th that that what is happening there is a dynamic load which is lasting only for a short duration that is known as impulsive loading and in that impulsive loading damping we all know the damping is there but it is of no, not that much importance because it will end very quickly so damping uh, forces so the different types of impulsive loading are constant impulse Rec constant impulse means it will be like this constant rectangular impulse that is the loading will be like this triangular impulse the loading will be in the shape of a triangle half sine wave that is like this half sine wave this region will not be there linearly weighing imp impulse linearly varying followed by constant impulse so these are some of the things which you need to study uh, about this so we need here you will be studying about each of this uh, uh, type of loading for example we are having that is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to what is f of t this f of t will vary according to this uh, if it is a constant load then f of t will be having a constant equation if it is a rectangle load another equation so we need to find out what are the responses responses means what is x of t this is a thing which we are studying from the first module onwards itself so here uh, constant impulse let's say so this is example of a constant impl impulse that is a constant load is there okay so first one let us take the condition undamped forced vibration due to constant imp impulse undamped forced vibration that is c is equal to zero so here you can see uh, again the equation will be having two parts as we have studied earlier complementary solution will be there and particular solution will be there what is a complementary solution means it is due to the vibrating system that is due to the natural frequency that particular solution means it is due to the loading condition okay now here let us take uh, here uh, as we all know that is a constant load is only a constant load where what is a constant load it is p0 that is a constant load and uh, we can take here uh, that is x of t is equal to a x that is complementary solution will be a cos omega t plus b sin omega t and particular solution will be here only a constant load is there so what will be the uh, displacement p0 is the constant load so p0 is equal to k into x so that is the same so x is equal to p0 by k simple we don't need to 
have any derivation and load. So, this is this is due to a constant load. Okay. So, our general solution will be x e plus uh, x p of t. So, from this we can add. So, here we need to apply the boundary conditions that is at x is equal to 0, x 0 is equal to 0, at, uh, at t is equal to 0 sorry and these are the two uh, boundary conditions. So, from that we can find out a and b. Okay. That is uh, the same procedure which we are following. We are having uh, the general equations. So, here I will be getting a as minus b 0 by k and b is uh, 0. Therefore, my solution will be x is equal to b 0 by k minus b 0 by k into cos omega t. So, the sin omega will not be there because this b is equal to 0. Since this term will not be there, we, we are getting a as minus b 0 by k. Therefore, uh, we can substitute and get the answer. Okay, so, this will be the response of a uh, system, dynamic system, which is undamped subjected to a constant load or impulse. Now, the dynamic magnification factor here it will be. So, what is dynamic magnification factor? That is dynamic displacement to static displacement. Static displacement will be always B0 by k. Dynamic displacement means this one x, x, this term. So, here P0, uh, so we can substitute here DLF will be uh, 1 minus cos omega t. So, DLF will be maximum when omega is equal to pi, then uh, DLF maximum will be 2. That is, that, that is you can see here, what will be the maximum condition when omega is equal to pi, that is 180. So, cos 180 is minus 1, so 1 minus minus 1 2. So, the maximum dyna dynamic magnification factor maximum will be 2. Okay. Next one, the same uh, condition, but here we are having the damping C, C is there. So, here again the equation is changing, our uh, con load is P0, then we are having x of t is equal to x c t plus uh, P, uh, x, P, that is complementary solution plus particular solution. And here what is the main change? Here the E raised to term will be coming because it is now a having second order and first order degree is there. Therefore, the general solution will be E raise to A cos omega t plus B sin omega t and P0. So, again the same way itself, uh, we, uh, we will be uh, adding, the, this will be the total uh, solution in that I have to find A and B. So, again by using the boundary conditions, I can uh, substitute, uh, so uh, I am having the boundary condition, same boundary conditions which we are using everywhere. So, I will be getting A is equal to minus V0 by K. In the last one, B was 0, but here B is not 0. Uh, here B, uh, I will be getting it as uh, this term, that is uh, P0, that is uh, our, and, and one thing you need to uh, know here it is, this term, that is here E raise to minus theta omega T. This is our solution. Okay. This we are choosing like this e raise to minus theta omega t. What is the, that is the, dynamic, the, the, the ratio theta omega t. So, from that I will be getting uh, b uh, the value of b. So, I can substitute in x and I can find out what is x t. Okay. So, here you can see I, I am taking p 0 by k as a constant from all the terms. I will be getting this equation and in this when theta is, uh, is, theta is very small then this 1 minus theta square will be 1 and I can simplify that. So, my final equation will be like this, just a simplification. Okay, so, like the, so this is the response due to a uh, constant force which is under damping condition. The other one was a under non damping condition, undamped condition. Okay. Now, next one let us look into the rectangular impulse load. So, rectangular impulse will be like this. Okay. So, this the here here the, we are having two conditions that is this is the first phase there there is load is there second phase no load is there okay first phase load is there so we are con we are having two phases phase 1 and phase 2 phase 1 it is load is there it is known as forced vibration when no load is there it is free vibration so the rectangular impulse we are having two phases phase 1 and phase 2 so the applied force is constant up to time under consideration and then it becomes 0. So, in this type of impulse there are two vibrations forced vibration and free vibration. During forced vibration load will be there followed by free vibration. Okay. Now, 
first let us take the undamped state. So, now, now the equation is becoming some more bigger. So, here this is the change m x double dot plus k x is equal to p 0 for phase 1. How can, how, why, why I am writing like that? Because up to this phase 1, this, this is t is equal to t 0. Let it be, this is t, let it be t 0. Now, here, so here I can say that, so here uh, the equation of motion is m x double dot plus k x is equal to p 0 for phase 1 and m x double dot that is phase 2. Now, here you can see m x double dot plus k x is equal to p 0. This was the thing which we studied earlier. So, the solution, that solution we can write directly. What will be the solution? p 0 by k into 1 minus cos omega t. So, this one be the same thing. Here we have derived it already. p 0 by k into 1 minus cos omega t. So, so that is the reason why the first of all the impulse was thought. Even in the syllabus it is given rectangular only, but uh, only after knowing the constant load, then only we can find out this. That is the reason why we, we studied that. Then the second condition, this is the first, for the first phase the solution is, this is the second phase it will be a cos omega instead of t, that is now the t is, that is the here the, this is t 0. So, uh, this is t 0. So, now the second phase instead of omega t, I have to, what will, what will the t will become? It is t minus t 0 because it is after the first phase. Okay, so, that is the reason. So, I am just writing t minus t 0. Now, differentiating, you can differentiate the first two equations. You can see that I am just dis differentiating, I am having the support conditions, uh, sorry, the uh, boundary conditions. At uh, So, here you can see applying the conditions. These are very important. So, I need to find out A and B. So, here uh, uh, I, am I am having the condition at x t is equal to t 0. So, this I am taking t is, no, I, am, I, am, I am applying the condition that is the earlier stages where I am app where applying the condition t at t is equal to 0. But here we already have this solution. Now, I need to find only this one, this term A and B. So, here at the second phase, the t will be t 0 and at t is equal to 0, what will be x 1? x 1 will be, that is what is x 1? x 1 will be x 2, okay? because what is the displacement? So, this you can see here x 1 is the solution of this phase and this is solution of x 2. At t is equal to 0, the displacement at this term, this position will be, it will be x 2 that will so x1 and x1 will be equal to x2 and the uh, x1 dot will be equal to x2 dot so that is a condition okay so that is a condition so in the above two equation to get a x1 and a, a and b so uh, i can consider uh, at t is equal to t0 x1 is equal to x2 so i am having two equations x1 is equal to x2 so here x 1 is equal to x 2. So, I am taking this is a two solutions. So, uh, I am going to find out. So, p 0 by k into 1 minus cos omega t is equal to this term at the t is equal to. So, from that you can see at t is equal to t 0. So, what is becoming here? This is t 0. Here what it was really t minus t 0. Now, t is equal to t 0. So, this, this one will be 0 here also it will be 0. So, what is uh, sin 0? It is this term is 0 and cos 0 is 1. So, this term it will be 1. Therefore, I will be getting A. So, I got A. Now, at t is equal to t 0, next condition x 1 dot is equal to x 2. So, here you can see this is what is x 1? This is x 1 dot and this is x 2 dot. So, both this will be equal. So, uh, this I can equate so, it is a simple term only. So, I am equating. So, here the, again this will be this is 0, here also 0, here sin uh, this term will become 0, that is this term will be 0 and this one will be 1. Therefore, I will be getting B as P 0 by k into sin omega t t 0. So, uh, now I got, now hence x 2 can be modified as, so now I can modify x 2, okay. That is now I got A and B. A and B have got so so my x2 will be what will be my x2 instead of A I can substitute what is a constant and B also I can substitute 
So, by substituting you can see here by after substitution I will be getting T 0 by k into cos omega t minus T 0 minus cos omega t. So, this will be my x 2. So, that will be my x 2. So, x so the total so at uh, the, so here from uh, in this prop question what was the changes that we have introduced is that late earlier there was only one solution, but now there is two solution why because there are phase 1 and there is phase 2. So, for these two phases we need to find the solution and in the phase 1 already we have found out what is the solution. So, you can uh, for if the if it is asked for the exam you can directly write this uh, that is x 1 directly you can write x 2 you need to find out this a and b you need to find out and write. Now, another uh, so here ok. So, here for at x 1 this is a solution then d what is d l f dynamic magnification factor that is equal to uh, static by dyna uh, the dynamic amplitude by static amplitude the initially it will be 1 minus cos omega t and for the second case it will be cos omega t t minus t 0 into minus cos omega this is just substituting for, for each of the solution we will be finding dlf ok. Now, let us go to the damped vibration that is again the c term will be there and the same condition that is p 0 at time t is two cases will be there. Uh, that is t less than t 0 it will be and t greater than t 0 it will be x 0 uh, that is 0. Then what is the change that is happening here you can see x c t is equal to so, uh, so I am having two equations this is the first equation for phase 1 and this is the second equation. So, here the question is again increasing. So, here you can see we need to find out the we need to find out the solution separately. So, here you can see m x double dot plus c x dot. So, for first taking the response of the first equation separately. So, that is the reason why here x 1 c t that is complementary solution plus x 1 p t. So, here minus e raise to minus theta eta omega t a omega d t plus b sin omega d t and here it is p 0 by k. So, after adding both these equations and applying the boundary conditions that is uh, the boundary condition that is these are the boundary conditions I, I will be getting I have to find out what is a and b that is uh, for adding x 1 in, uh, after applying the initial condition for phase 1 as x 1 is equal to 0 we can find out what is the constant a and b. Now, the response of the equation 2 is in damped uh, condition for phase 2 it will be x 2 of t will be e raise to minus t minus t 0 into p cos omega t that will be the equation uh, the here the constant c is p and q ok. So, uh, uh, so let us uh, see once again what is uh, been done here that is I am having two phases phase 1 this is the equation phase 2 this is a for here each phase there will be complementary solution and a particular solution. So, first one this is a solution of the first one. Now, here we know that in a damped vibration this will be the complementary solution and this will be the particular solution. So, here you can find out after adding x 1 is equal to x 1 c t x 1 p t applying the initial condition for phase 1 as x 1 is equal to 0 and x t is equal to 0 then at time t is equal to 0 I can find out constants a and b. Now, in the solution 2 it is a damped vibration uh, but the force is 0 that is this is the equation m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to 0. So, for that we already have found out what is the answers, but here what is a change that is omega t will be, be it will be omega t it will be what omega t minus t 0 because it is starting from t 0. So, then you can find out by the applying the boundary condition what will be the boundary condition at t is equal to t 0 ok that is important x 1 is equal to x 2 
and x1 dot is equal to x2 root. So, by applying this you can find out p and q. Uh, so, um, this one I, uh, I will be giving you as an assignment that you need to find out the p and q values as well as a and b values. Okay. So, that you need to uh, find out by your own. Now, let us look into the next type that is uh, again triangular impulse load triangular. So, you can see here this is a load again it is having two phases phase 1 and phase 2 phase 1 there is force phase 2 there is no force that is free vibration. So, uh, we, can, we can see here uh, P0 it is the total load then P by T is there. So, let th this be the phase 1 and this be the phase 2. So, here uh, we are having equation that is uh, if I am taking the force in the phase 1 phase 1. So, phase 1 you can see there is not a constant force it is varying. So, I am taking a region let this th the force at this region be P of T. Okay? This is the total load that is P0 and this is T0. So, let I am taking a time at which uh, this at T is equal to at T at a, at, a, at a time T I need to find out the equation for P T. This is my load this is the tot maximum load. So, by using the similar triangle I can take the similar triangle you can see here P0 divided by this is P0. P0 divided by T0 is equal to, I am taking this one, this here it is PT. PT divided by, what will be the uh, distance, this distance it will be, so here if I am taking this distance it will be T0 minus T. Okay? So, from the here I can write the general equation for, the general load will be PT, that PT is equal to P0 into T0 minus T by T0. So, here P0 into T0 by T I can uh, just write and I will be getting 1 minus T by T0. So, that will be the equation of the load that is P0 though. So, the equation the load that is here since it is varying I need to so if I am substituting for example, uh, I am substituting T is equal to 0 then what will be the load it is P0 you can look here at T is equal to 0 the load will be P0. So, same so likewise I have found out an equation therefore, this will be the equation of motion and that is first of all it is a damped condition I am taking. So, mx double dot plus kx is equal to P0 sorry P, Pt I can write Pt. So, what is Pt it is P0 into 1 minus T by T0 this is phase 1 second phase is that is there is no load that is at when t greater than t0. Okay. So, let us look into the phase 1 solution separately. So, x 1 t plus this is the phase 1 this one represents the phase. So, I am having com complementary solution particular solution. Now, here so the first solution here you can see the particular solution will be it is since it is a constant load it will be P0 by K or P T it will be P T by K. What is P T? It is P0 into 1 minus T by T0 divided by K. Now, X1 C T will be A K cos omega T plus B sin omega T. So, now the similar ways uh, I, I need to find out the A and B. So, uh, this will be my total solution. Now, I, I need to look what are the initial condition. Initial condition when X is I mean T is equal to 0 x is equal to x 0 is equal to 0 and x dot is equal to x 0 dot is equal to 0 that is my initial condition. So, from here I can find out what is a and what is b. So, by substituting the I will be getting this will be my the uh, by uh, my first phase solution. Now, let us look into the second phase solution. So, second phase solution what is the equation m x dot plus k x is equal to 0 that is my second solution. So, here the uh, solution. So, in, uh, for this what is the general solution we are generally writing x is equal to a cos omega t plus b sin omega t because there is no damping. But here a and b we have already have used. So, I am changing a to c and d and what will be omega t that is omega t minus t 0. Okay, that is only change. 
now we can apply this this solution we have already uh, found out earlier uh, so i can uh, that is the same thing which we studied in the first module okay so uh, if if you remember that you can write it directly but anyway it is better to just uh, uh, ready but, but but the change is that what is the change that is initial condition is changing what is the initial condition boundary condition is changing that is at t is equal to t0 x1 is equal to x2 and x1 dot is equal to x2 dot so x1 we found out here okay from there only we can start therefore x1 at t is equal to 0 x1 is equal to x2 what, so i can look what is x1 x1 it is this one okay this one this term will be equal to this term will be equal to this term t0 by k and here what is the change t is equal to t0 so what is so i am just writing that here you can see all the t terms will be t0 so here by simplification i will be getting c first one then again the applying the second condition i can find out what is the value of d so by after substitution of c and d in x2 we will get the response so you can just write the equation that is uh, we, we will finding c and d and you can find out what will be the response okay now let us see, uh, look so uh, we now we look the undamped now it's the same thing damped condition so c term is coming again x1 uh, ct is equal to e raise to minus omega t a cos omega dt plus b sin omega dt again uh, you can see p0 into 1 minus t by t0 into k the same equation so the same way by applying boundary condition i can find out what is x1 then after that i can find out what is x2 x2 there will be no particulate integral because what is the reason there is no particulate integral because there is no load is there x2 so by uh, substituting these two i can find out what is x1 and x2 okay so this one also you need to find out and uh, uh, the values of a and b separately okay so there is a uh, some derivation is there anyway uh, that you need to find out. i will be giving it as an assignment question now let us look into a small some problems here you can see for a dynamic loading system shown in the figure uh, compute the deflection at t is equal to 0 0.15 seconds okay that is a question so here so here you can see that so here you can see that t is equal to point 0.15 this is the solution this is my condition here the load applied is it is in the form of a triangular load okay and what is the change so it is in the so here it is this is the point therefore it is coming under which phase phase one this is phase two so it is a what is phase one it is a forced vibration stage so i need to know get the idea about what is the equation so this is my equation this we derive okay so in numerical problems and all mainly uh, you will be asked uh, conditions mainly on the phase one only because the other one will be very uh, large equation so uh, likewise it will be uh, mostly it is seen like that anyway sometimes the others can uh, can also be asked so this is our equation so here 1 minus t t0 what is t0 it is 0.5 seconds and here uh, we are given it that for a dynamic loading system shown in the figure i need to find out the value so first of all i am finding out omega omega is equal to root of k by m so from here i can find out 44.72 radians per second i am getting it as so we need to find the deflection at 0.15 second and it will be coming under forced vibration as per the loading nature so now here the what are the values p0 it is already given 600 k is given t0 okay t0 is also given so here this uh, this value this value it is uh, it is 0.5 seconds okay the question it was missed it is 0.5 seconds this at 1.5 only we need to find out 0.15 sorry so t0 it is t0 it is 0.5 and what is t it is 0.15 so by substituting all these values in this equation i can find out the solution so the here only thing you need to uh, know is this 
equation. It is not easy, but after writing some time, uh, some uh, repeatedly you are revising, you will be able to keep in keep it in mind. Okay. Now another question you can see here for an undamped SEO system of mass and everything is given. Here uh, we need to find out find the expression of the resulting motion. Okay. It is a undamped only. Okay, um, mostly the, uh, damped, uh, undamped will be only uh, damped. Uh, is rarely uh, not seen. So uh, 60 kilogram stiffness is given. I need to find. So to impulse, uh, every conditions are given. T0 it is 0.3. So I am having two phases. So here I need to find the total solution. So omega is equal to uh, omega. I am finding out. Now I am having two phases. That is from T is equal to 0 to T is equal to 0.3 and T greater than 0.3. So, here it will be forced vibration, here it will be free vibration. So, here you can see the forced vibration my solution will be this one T0 by K into 1 minus cos omega T. So, this is a solution. Okay. So, from this I can find out X1 T. X1. Now, that, that will be my the solution in the first part. Then second part solution again it is a free vibration solution is this one. So, you need to know the uh, equation. So, I, I will be getting x1 and x2. So, these will be my uh, f, uh, a, a expression for uh, the response in the first and second phase. So, here uh, you may find it out very easily we have written, but the thing is that you need to know this equation. Then only you will be able to easily write that. Now, another uh, question here. Uh, a one story building is idealized as a 3.5 meter high frame with two columns hinged at the base and rigidly beam at the, as a natural period of 0.4 seconds. Neglecting the damping, determine the maximum displacement at the top level and corresponding response. Maximum spring force due to the rectangular impulse of 100 Newton for a duration of 0.2 seconds take E and I everything that re, the E and I uh, is given. So, this is a uh, equation this is a loading. Okay. Now, what are the things that are given? So, anyway uh, I just look into what is the value which we need to find out. So, here I need to find out the I need to find out the maximum negative find determine the maximum displacement at the top level and the corresponding maximum spring force spring spring force i need to find out as well as the maximum displacement i need to find so first thing is that first one we need to understand what are the things so first one it is the displacement so displacement will be x okay that is displacement the next one it is spring force Spr what is spring force force due to the spring that or the stiffness that is equal to k into x. So, maximum spring force will be at a maximum displacement. So, if I know x, I can find out k, then multiplying it will be getting x. And what is k? So, k here you can see it is having two columns hinged at the base. So, this is my condition. This we studied in the last class. So, here what is what will be the value of k? There will be k1 and there will be k2. Therefore, k will be k1 plus k2 and what will be k1? It is 3 e i by l cube. L is given, it is 3.5. E and i is given. Therefore, I can find out k. Then these are the things I need to know. Now, next is, next thing it is x. How to find out x? So, here it is a rectangular. So, the maximum will be at this point, right? At t is equal to point t0. So, here the, the, the you need to know this is the this is my equation at the first phase x1 is equal to p0 by k into 1 minus cos omega t okay this t will be 0 0.2 maximum so displacement will be maximum at the here okay so uh, these things first of all then i need to find out here i what are the things i need, need? omega i need P0 and K I need. Okay. So, here you can see P0 it is already given. K I can find out. K1 plus K2 I can find out what is K. Then omega. Okay. 
how we can find omega omega we all know it is uh, root of k by m but here mass and everything is not given only a rectangular load is given so another term is given here natural period is given that is t capital t is given t it is what is t given it as uh, natural time period is given as 0.4 now we know that uh, t is equal to 2 pi by omega this is our equation time period therefore omega is equal to 2 pi by t so it is written here so 2 pi in divided by 0 0.4 i can find out what is value of t now that is uh, now okay the uh, that will be my uh, omega that is omega is equal to 2 pi by t so i found out t okay so omega i have found out now i can just substitute in this equation then i will be getting x that is the maximum displacement now corresponding to spring force spring force will be k into x so k it is already we have found out what is x also by substituting that you can find out what is the spring force so the in all the problems which we are studying you need to um, read the problem clearly and need to understand what are the things so only a uh, small soil equation will be there but you need to correctly identify what are the factors to be found out and what to be found out okay so in different problems can be asked uh, likewise okay so that's all for this video thank you